In this video, we are going to talk about three reasons why you want or actually kind of need to feel special as a fearful avoidant. I am Pauline and I am so happy you are here because wanting to feel special, it sounds romantic, doesn't it? If you're special, that must mean that the relationship is the right one and he or she is the one. And this, my friend, is a lie. We've been told and has been portrayed in movies for the past decades. Um, and it's not helping you. It's actually a reason why we, as fearful avoidance, tend to um, want relationships that can be kind of toxic. And I am going to explain why, and we are going to dive into these three reasons why you want to feel special. So the first reason is, as a fearful avoidant, chances are that you have not experienced just receiving love just because you are enough. And you are. You are enough. You always have been enough. It's not you. It's never you. I say that again and again. Um, if you haven't just received unconditional love when you were younger, it's never you. It's never your fault. But what gets installed is that you feel like you have to earn love. You have to earn attention. You have to earn sometimes even respect or understanding. And when love is freely given to you, you don't really trust it. You're weary. You're like, what? well, what's, what's happening? What's wrong? What's going to happen? This can't be right. And what actually can happen when you meet somebody that just unconditionally loves you is that you lose respect for them. This happens a lot in fearful avoidance. And the reason that is, is because when somebody is steady, giving you unconditional love, uh, is committed and loyal to you, that opens the door to deeper intimacy and deeper commitment. That is what you are very afraid of because that means being vulnerable and being seen. And you are so afraid of letting people come too close because of what they might find out or um, you fucking up. That might be a, a fear of you also. So <clears throat> it feels safer for you to have to earn it in a way that makes you in control. Because if you don't work for it, it won't be there. The connection won't be there. So earning that love and earning that connection feels familiar to your system, but it also feels safe for you because you are the one in control. You decide when there is a connection and when there isn't. And when you're, you're scared, you just don't work and there's no connection. That's why fearful avoidance tend to also be attracted to emotionally unavailable partners. I might actually make a whole different video on that if you're interested. Let me know in the comments below. So that is the first reason. You feel like you have to earn it. Um, and when you earn it, then you're special. Then your partner chooses you because you've, you've earned it. And that makes the love you get special. The second reason is that this is a little this can be a little bit different for men and women if your partner changes for you that means that you are safe and this is different in men and women in the sense that women um tend to want to help or therapize their um partners so what can happen is that a fearful avoidant meets somebody who is damaged in a way and um and just has a lot of wounds, has a lot of triggers, and they feel um, valued and worthy uh, helping this person get through their fears and get through their and healing their wounds. And this actually can be a deflection of your own wounds and your own triggers, but that might also be <laughs> a story for a different time. Um, men sometimes do this in wanting to save their partner. Uh, so wanting just to be there all around protector and wanting to make sure harm never happens. And when there is this belief underlying that, that when your partner um, changes for you, 
so they are different than they were before they knew you, that's when you are safe because then you're special. You're different than all those other partners, people that have come before you. Um, but what this does is that you tend to seek out relationships that can actually be um, quite challenging. Let's just put it that way. Uh, because you are with a person that's not healed and it really does not work to want to help somebody else. And I know this kind of si sounds harsh and maybe, maybe even selfish, but it's actually, um, it, it's actually quite the opposite. And that took a lot of time for me to learn. It's a very codependent way of thinking to think, no, but if somebody is in pain, I need to help them. And I, if I can, I have to. But the reason a fearful avoidant sometimes does this is because then when they when the partner has changed or when the partner has healed, the fearful avoidant believes that um, then they will never leave because you have given so much, you have added so much value to their lives that they almost can't leave. It wouldn't be ethically, morally right for them to leave. And in a way, and I see say this with the the deepest empathy, in a way, this is manipulation. Because you need them to heal, you need them to change, you need to tame them, uh, and you need them to be happy so that you feel safe, so that you know that you are special and that they won't leave. And what this does is that it leads you to relationships that are very frustrating because somebody can only heal themselves and it's, it kind of sucks because you are probably also sometimes on the other uh, end of it that you want to be saved. You want there to be somebody, your partner, that just can take the pain away. And that is so logical because there is so much pain. And I wish that it worked like that. I wish there was this magical knight in shining armor or goddess in, in shining light uh, that could save you from your pain. But you are you are that knight in shining armor or the goddess in shining light because you are the only one that can heal yourself. And that is also true for your partner. So that is the second reason why you want to feel special. You believe that if you are special, if you've done something that no, no one else before you has been able to do, that they won't leave you because you've put in so much and it, it just wouldn't be right for them to leave. And then the third one is you want to be special. Um, I Let's start with a, a small story. When I started dating uh, Aryan, who was my boyfriend, now my husband of seven years, and we've been together for 13 years, um, I noticed that he was kind to everyone. The way he treated me with just respect and understanding was the way he treated everybody else. And that gave me such an uh, uncomfortable feeling. And I couldn't, I did not know where that came from then. And I just, um, I was kind of annoyed actually. <laughs> In a way, I just wanted him to treat me differently than other people. And it took me so long to figure out why that was. In the moment, I wasn't even aware of me being uncomfortable with that. But it, I just got kind of annoyed with him if he was being super nice to other people in the same way he was to me. Um, because I wanted to feel special. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> um, but looking back, I can, I can clearly see that I wanted him to treat me differently because... And this is true for almost all fearful avoidance. You don't trust choices. You only trust feelings. So he chose me. And that was the only reason I knew he was with me. Because he treated everybody else pretty much the same. Um, in terms of being kind and respectful and understanding. And what I in a way wanted was that he was nicer to me and kinder to me. Because then I knew I would be different from other people. But what's, what that says is that I didn't trust his decision that he wanted to be with me. What I wanted was that he was just so in love with me that he couldn't do anything else than be with me. And that would show through 
um, him being nicer to me, kinder to me, more loving to me. That will make me know that he loved me more than anybody else. And in that way, I was special. And that would make sure that he wouldn't leave me. And this is this is a false belief in, in on so many levels. Because first of all, research shows, and this is like really good, thorough research, that one of the biggest secrets of a long and happy marriage is a characteristic. And that characteristic of both partners is kindness. And that doesn't mean that your partner is only kind to you. That means that the characteristic of your partner is kindness. So they will be kind to everybody. And if you then search or want somebody that treats you better, but treats other people horribly. And I've been in those situations. I've been with guys that were like super charming towards me and then not so nice towards the waitress. And that is definitely a red flag. That is definitely a red flag in relationships. Um, but it, it makes you feel special. So that, that wanting to feel special can actually be quite detrimental. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so from research, kindness is one of the biggest secrets or um, um, parts of a happy marriage. And then what is way more important than feelings is that choice, is that choice for your partner. And I say that because we tend to put feelings on a pedestal and as fearful avoidance even more so because intense emotions were probably very um, there when you were younger, um, very much available. And you correlate that or you link that or you associate that with love. And it's not. It's not the intensity of love that um, is a predictor of how happy your relationship is going to be. It's not. Um, and love is a choice. I've interviewed a hundred couples who were happily married over 40 years and what came back again and again is I chose him, I chose her and not just one time, not just when they got married, but again and again and again, because the nature of feelings is that they come and go. The nature of feelings is that they, they are like ebb and flow. They are not constant. They are not always there. And it isn't true that the more intense your feelings are, the more safe or secure you are in your relationship. It is actually true that sometimes, and I'm not saying that this is always and that happy relationships are just kind of like a dull feeling, not at all. But sometimes the most intense feelings um, are in the most toxic relationships. And you know, you know a relationship like that. Maybe it was you. Maybe you've seen it in somebody else. Like people are just crazy about each other but like almost literally crazy. Like they, it's, it's just a very toxic dynamic. And in the end, nobody is the happier. So the intensity of feelings is what we tend to trust as a fearful avoidant, because that's what we link to love, because that's what we're used to. That's what feels familiar. And we don't really trust choices because we haven't learned to self-regulate our parents or our caregivers. Uh, probably had a hard time self-regulating also. And that is needed to uh, follow through on a decision. So actually this comes back to you maybe not trusting yourself. All right, we went a little very much deep there, <laughs> uh, but I hope you're following. So the more you trust decisions and the more you take feeling and, and feeling intensely off of a pedestal because it does not belong there and it will definitely in, um, cause you to be less happy in relationship in relationships. And the more you trust decisions, the more um, stable your relationships will feel. So this is, this is such an important topic because I think as a fearful avoidant, I think pretty much all fearful avoidants have this wanting to feel special because you want to feel safe in a way. You want to make sure that you are not being abandoned. And the way you do that is by wanting to be special. Um, and I, I really hope that this showed you that that actually can, can lead to the toxic relationships that a lot of fearful avoidants have. 
And again, I am really not saying that a happy and healthy relationship is always like, is no, not intense feelings, but those intense feelings come from a very different source, um, from deep intimacy and friendship. And that's what we're so afraid of, of as fearful avoidance, but you can get there and you can feel this love that is just calm and super intense at the same time. And it's so hard to explain, but it's so amazing. And I, I definitely do wish that for you. Uh, and it does include you not wanting to feel special anymore. You are special, you are unique, but wanting to feel special in this way that we just talked about um, can definitely cause a lot of frustration, a lot of frustration. If you, if you have examples of this, put them in the comments below. I, I think they will always help. Please let me know if this was valuable also. And if you want to get to the root of this and really heal this fearful avoidant attachment style and allow a relationship that is just loving and unconditional and feels good at the same time, you can put yourself on the wait list for my program, which will come out somewhere in the coming months. Uh, and I will keep you on updated on when that one opens. I really hope this was valuable for you. Let me know in the comments below and I will see you next time.